Sorry, folks, I'm having some technical difficulties. It'll take me a minute or two. So while Connor's getting ready, I just want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. Virtual hugs to everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, Susan is going to pre present prayers. So here she goes. Yeah, as soon as Connor is, there we go. Yashin Shoki Nubjune, Emma Shunish Sidrak, Kordu Kandraman Bokor, Keki Sidrak Duki, Jinji Lokshar Shak Suso. Teacher, foe destroyer, <clears throat> excuse me, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, Thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, and to have the knowledge and good conduct, 
Gondibus, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary means to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, while abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, <coughs> excuse me, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all th three ever devout, homage. <coughs> To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate may migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala together with other pure offerings and wealth and the virtues I have created throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. On my masters, my idams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam Guru Rana Mandala Kam Mariachi Yami. And Karen, um, could you do the Heart Sutra? My voice is succumbing to allergies. <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to. Mine's a little croaky, but not as much as yours. <laughs> the Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. 
Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on massive altars mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharvadi Putra. Sharputra, any son of lineage or daughter of lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Sharputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on, and up to, and including, no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to, and including, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared Tayata, Gate, Gate, Par Gate, Par Sam Gate, Bodhisoha. Tayata gate gate par gate par sam gate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of lineage. It is like that. It is like that. 
one should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharbali Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avokateshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Hello, um, happy Losar Tashi Dela, as well as happy Valentine's Day. Um, I am Heather McClelland, and I have been a student of Lama's for almost four years now. Uh, and I will be giving a talk on Tara. I even wore my Tara t-shirt and rainbow stockings uh, to help me. Um, I will also be talking about how much Tara has helped me in my experiences as well as my connections to her. Um, for those of you not as familiar with Tara, she is one of the most popular figures in the Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions. She is a meditation deity for practitioners to develop certain qualities within themselves of a Buddha and Bodhisattva. Now I'm going to tell you a story about why and how Tara is especially important to me. Many of you know that my family and I came here to Sacramento from paradise after we lost everything in the campfire, which you may remember was not far from here. Um, it burned the entire town. Uh, but before that, Lama had given me my first practice, which was Green Tara. And along with practicing, practicing it, I also taught my kids about her, as well as her mantra, which is Om Tare Tu Tare Tare Soha. Uh, we listened to Tara chants and songs, and I made her important to all my family. And now I'd like to read a statement my husband, Matt, wrote about his perspective of our experience the day of the fire. We woke up in the morning of November 8th, 2018, as usual, which is running about five minutes late. Jack, Benjamin, who are our kids, and I got dressed and loaded up in our truck and drove to their school. We pulled into the parking lot of the school and we were greeted by the principal and another staff member who told us that the school had been canceled because there was a fire to the east and out of precaution, they were shutting down. To this point, I hadn't even noticed any smoke, but as I looked to the east, I could see a large plume of smoke. We drove back to the house, which was not even five minutes away, and I told Heather what was happening. By this time, ashes had started falling on our property, and I knew that it was time to get out of there. We loaded up our van with the four of us, our two dogs, one cat, and a few of our personal belongings we had made ready. I reserved space in our van for an elderly disabled gentleman named Charles, who lived in a separate home at the front of our property. When we got there to get Charles in our van, one of his caretakers arrived to pick him up. So we closed the door and drove off. And normally uh, it takes about five to 10 minutes to drive just through the town of paradise. Um, and the rest goes, our house was nearly at the top of the town of paradise on a street called Rocky Lane with the nearest cross street being Wagstaff. We got to the end of Rocky Lane and turned right to drive towards Skyway as this was the evacuation route in that sort of situation. It took nearly 20 minutes to even get onto Wagstaff. By this time, the sky had turned nearly totally black and this was first thing in the morning. The wind was blowing hard enough to move our van and ash was filling the air. You could see the glow from the fire under the smoke just faintly. We were stuck in a line of cars on Wagstaff Road for 20 more minutes. I started to get horribly anxious. No one was moving. No one could get anywhere. All I could think of was the safety of my family 
and there was no route to safety. No one was letting cars into the roadway. No one was able to move. I could see in my side view mirror that there were no cars backed up on Clark Road toward the fire, which was behind us, another main road in paradise. There was so much ash and cinder in the air that you could no longer see any light, even from even that from the giant fire that was right up the hill from us at that time. I made the decision to make a U-turn where I was and to head to Clark Road. At least we could move if we went that way. I told my family, I am going to yell at some of you during this. Just let me do it and it will pass. I had been scared for our lives for nearly an hour by this point. I was able after some tight turning to get us facing Clark Road and we were off in that direction. It was only a momentary reprieve. As we turned onto Clark Road, we did not get far before being confronted by traffic again. Um, uh, we were near the intersection of Billy Road and the traffic was dead stopped again. I could not see more than maybe 50 feet in any direction. The power had gone out and the only light uh, visible were the hundreds of brake lights in front of us. The glow from the fire was getting closer by the moment, was nearly invisible due to all the, the flying cinder and ash in the air. I started getting desperate. I pulled into the median to get further down the road. When the traffic in the median was stopped, I used the oncoming lanes, first the one nearest to us, then the one nearest the sidewalk and even into the sidewalk. All I could think was, we have to get out of here. When we finally arrived at Billy Road, it became apparent why the traffic wasn't moving. The traffic lights, which, which still had power, were in the usual weekday morning schedule, so no one coming onto Clark from the side streets had any way to get onto the main road and to safety. When we finally arrived at Billy Road, we were stopped by some of the first, some of some first responders who were trying to let folks onto Clark Road. We were stopped for several minutes. Cinders and embers lit up the darkness, whipping across the face of our vehicle. My older son, Jack, spotted fire in the trees just to our right. Everyone in our vehicle was scared to death and had been for now over an hour. Someone in an older Toyota pickup had got themselves turned around in the intersection. It was chaos. He ended up catty corner to where we were with his vehicle facing ours. He looked over the top of our van and screamed, the fire is right there. We are all going to die. That was easily the single scariest thing I had ever witnessed. The fire was indeed right behind us. Just after that incident, we were allowed to continue traveling down Clark Road. It was pitch black except for the cinders flying across my field of vision. The fire was all around us. I was able again to use the whole of the road, passing people and cars as we made our way down the hill. You could again see the glow of the fire behind us as well as objects and trees catching fire all around us. It is hard to describe. The black was so immense. The buildings, trees, everything you can think of on fire, except we are so close to it that you could not see it directly because the fire and wind kicked up so much debris. It was like we were being consumed by some sort of demon. It took another 45 minutes before we got to Pearson Road. The road down to Oroville had been closed since first thing that morning. Either way, I say, I see one of the mothers of my employees. She worked for the city and was directing traffic. I said to her, you've got to get out of here. The fire is right there, because it was. It was directly up the hill on Clark where we had just been and seen it. She told me that Pearson Road had been opened up all four lanes to Skyway for the evacuation. And I took full advantage of that information. As we sped along Pearson Road, you could see again the incredible glow from the fire underneath the giant billow of pitch black smoke. We had been in this flight now for two plus hours, constant danger and fear for my and my family's life. 
As we approached Skyway again, I could see that the traffic was dead stopped. I had been through that before that morning, and I was not going to put us through that again. I had a good idea of the layout of the town, so I made a choice to drive through town and to try and escape on the road to the dump. I could see that nobody was moving on to Skyway. There was momentary relief, as I recall, in making this choice. We were no longer stopped, and we were a little further away from the fire. We were in a small line of vehicles, including a volunteer police officer and a propane truck. We got to a stop sign on the way to the dump. Across from us, there were a couple folks who were trying to load up their horse into a trailer. I remember thinking to myself, okay, Matt, after this stop sign, it's just a couple switchbacks and you'll be safe. When from our left side, we were struck by a cantaloupe-sized chunk of flying cinder. It exploded on the front left corner of our van. We were not out of the woods yet. Thankfully, we were able to get to the road to the dump and then further down the hill, it got lighter. The sky became, the lighter the sky became and the safer I felt for my family and I. Um, that's that. But the reason I wanted to share that with you is because throughout the whole experience, I never stopped saying the Tara mantra. I prayed to her to help us. And it was not only me who repeated her mantra, um, trying to escape. But after we were safe, my then eight-year-old son told me that he too never stopped repeating her mantra. And I felt happy to know that she had been there for him too. And not only that, I also learned after the fire that one of the things that Tara protects against is forest fires. Mm. So now I'll tell you more about who Tara is. There are two main origin stories about how she became to exist. One of them is about how a million years ago in a different world system, there was a princess named Wisdom Moon. She was a very devoted practitioner of the Buddha and worked very hard to attain enlightenment. However, the monks around her told her that she should pray to be reborn as a man so she could reach enlightenment. Uh, she knew that that was a faulty argument born out of ignorance. She replied that genders were just categories and had no bearing on who could become enlightened. So there she vowed that because there were so few women on, that were on the path that she would also be reborn in the female form and especially to support women. So she was like an original feminist. Uh, the second story begins with Avalek Tishvara. He had vowed that he would not reach enlightenment until all beings were freed from samsara. After he had done so much practicing, he climbed to the top of the Himalayas to see what beings were left. And to his dismay, there still remained so many. He began to cry, and out of his tears, green and white Tara appeared. They began to comfort Avalik Tishvara and promised to support him in his goal to free all beings. And so green and white Tara are the two main and most popular of the manifestations of Tara. White Tara is known for protection. And green Tara is the Buddha of enlightened, enlightened action, meaning that she is quick to help beings who pray to her. She also is protector who combats many fears and obscurations. When you look at her posture and images of her, you can see how one leg is tucked around under her, but her right leg is extended, signifying her readiness to spring into action. However, there are 21 manifestations of Tara, all re representing the many qualities of an enlightened being with green Tara as the main figure. Another part of Tara that really connects with me is the idea that she is the mother of all Buddhas, as described in her very feminine attributes. As a mother myself, 
I can identify with her ability to quickly come to the aids of beings who need her, just as a mother who quickly comes to the aid of her children. Those of you who are mothers know what I'm talking about. Uh, she is also known to be playful and helps practitioners with a tight and restricted mind loosen up. This reminds me of how mothers too attempt to be playful with their own children and try to relax their kids that may be worried about what could be upsetting them. And lastly is her natural ability to comfort, just like what could be the most identifiable quality of all mothers who are constantly concerned about their kids' well-being, just like how she confront, comforted Avalik Tishvara when he was in distress. So why should you practice Tara? Tara literally fills us with the inspiration to practice the Dharma. In fact, she has inspired me to do many things, including many artworks of her. And just like many of the meditation deities, doing her practice promotes us to take on her qualities and reminds us that we have the same qualities inside us that our Buddha nature has the ability to be realized. In fact, in the practice of Tara, you are to imagine that she pours an energy that enters the top of the head and enriches us with her qualities. She is also known to be completely accessible to all beings, just a prayer calling for her help and she will be there ready to aid. Just like I believe she did while we were escaping the fire. Just like I mentioned before, Tara protects from forest fires, and that's just one of the eight dangers she protects against. The eight dangers are both physical dangers that threaten our lives, such as floods, thieves, and evil spirits. Each one of those is related to inner obscurations that she helps dispel on your way to enlightenment. These inner obscurations are ignorance, pride, anger, jealousy, wrong views, greed, desire, and attachment, and doubt. One thing that I've been doing on request of Lama is to recite the 21 praises to Tara chant. He said this was very important for the temple as well as myself. When I asked him why it was so important, he said that it connects us with the world because so many traditions also do the chant. He said it promotes community as like a family. And that's what I've got. <laughs> so for discussion, Lama suggested asking any and all of you what experiences you might have had with Tara. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Hey, this is Susan. I'll Hi, share. Susan. Hey, um, thank you, Heather. That was a really delightful talk. Uh, um, a long time ago, I, this would have been, oh, I don't know, at least 10, maybe 12 years ago. Um, I was south of Fresno, um, having left uh, a visit with my mother-in-law who lived down there and really way out in the middle of Blinken nowhere. And I had um, a dog in the back of my car and I was driving back to Sacramento and I had a dog in the back of my car who was deaf and blind. She was really old and I had to take her everywhere with me because she was so old. And all of a sudden, I mean, and I was on this road with absolutely no traffic. And all of a sudden, like this whole weird sound started with my car. And as it turned out, this, there's a plate underneath the car, some sort of a shield, and it like fell off. And so I had to pull over and the bottom of my car had fallen off. It was really weird. I, I didn't even, anyway. And there was no traffic. There was nobody around. I had this dog with, no, you know, who was like terrified. And so I just started doing the Tara mantra. I mean, I didn't know what else to do, <laughs> you know. Um, I had my phone, but, um, 
you know, like I was a long way from home. So I figured I would at least maybe be able to call a tow truck or something. And um, so I was getting ready to do that. And I'd sort of been hanging out for a while, trying to figure out what to do and saying the mantra. And then this guy comes along in a pickup and he knew exactly what was I got underneath the car and knew exactly what was wrong, pulled out some bailing wire, tied this thing back up again. And I was on my way back to Sacramento. Um, and it was the only person I saw for like a long, long time. I must've been out there an hour and, um, and they had some water. So we were able to give the dog some water. So that was good. And he gave me a bottle of water. Because I didn't have anything with me. I didn't, you know, it's only a couple hours back to Sacramento. I didn't think it was any big deal. Anyway, so the whole time I said the Taro mantra, and then this guy shows up. So that was cool. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. And that's what, you know, I hear and read that she is ready to help, just like that in many ways. In fact, I read that she's even been seen in a way that green, green light will just appear to those chanting to her and saying her mantra. Anybody else? Nobody else? Should we all say her mantra for a little bit? Anybody, anybody? Yes, Susan says yes. Okay, so again, it goes Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. So we'll say it. How, how long, Patty? Okay, let's do 108. Um. Stuck on my hair. Okay. Well, hey, Heather, let's dedicate yeah. Mr. Lama for his long life oh, and good health. That. that is a great idea. Do you want to go ahead and say a dedication or just that? Yeah, I think just that. Is that, a, is that okay. a good enough? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Okay. Uh, should we say it out loud, Patty? Okay. 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 Let's get this up just so that people can see the mantra, not necessarily the words. Right. The words. Right. Uh, so I'll say it a few times and then we can all say the rest of them. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha.
Om tare tutare ture soha. Um, does anybody else have anything to share? If not, I guess we'll do the dedication or the closing. Does anybody have any general questions about Tara? Quiet audience today. Oh, hi, Hillary. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, I just, I loved that talk so much. And um, it reminded me just now, I just realized I hadn't thought of it in, in years that I was given a Tibetan name when I was a kid, Yudan Lamo, <laughs> goddess of turquoise light. And I just don't think I've really thought about what it meant. Uh, I guess it's probably Tara. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> That's awesome. Just, yeah, it's just such a beautiful image. So, um, and I just, you know, I live in New Mexico now, being from California, and it's just so full of turquoise, you know, mm -hmm. things, there's just turquoise everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I don't know, I just. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I've always, it just, I've always loved it. You know, I never get sick of it. So anyway, mm -hmm. it's just kind of, I like now that you've said, you know, I can think of the original feminist, Tara, now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. anyway, totally. That was a beautiful talk. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Who? Paul. Hello, Paul. Paul, you raised your hand. Are you there, Paul? You're still on mute. You're trying to talk, Paul. <laughs> Paul sometimes has some connection issues. So maybe if you want to put your question in the comments, Paul. Oh, there you go. Is he doing it? <laughs> okay, then um, while Paul's trying to figure that out, anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. Okay. Paul still hasn't figured it out. Jake says, really appreciate the talk. It was great. Thank you, Heather. Oh, you're welcome. I was really nervous. Um, so I'm glad people enjoyed it. Anything else, Connor? Well, do you want to start dedication? And Paul, can you get your comment in the the, the comments or your your mic to work, and we'll we can maybe talk to you afterwards. Sure. Can we make a conversation for a few minutes? Sure. Right. Yeah. So I do the dedication. Uh, if you want to do the dedication. Oh, I'm sorry. Given's voice is still. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's Paul. Paul says, at our wedding, we invited two llamas, and they both gave us Tonka's green and white car. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That is cool. They're very significant. OK. Sure. And when we get to the long life prayer for uh, Lama Jimpa, we're going to repeat it three times. Lama just had his second um, COVID shot, and he's feeling the effects of that. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of the Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that does not arise and arise and grow 
and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful, generous, tense and gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manzushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. O Sandrapa, I make requests at your holy feet. And Connor, are you going to put up the prayer to save Sakya? Yeah, there we go. These are the verses to save Sakya from sickness, a prayer for pacifying the fear of disease. May all the diseases that disturb the minds of sentient beings and which result from karma and temporary conditions, such as the harms of spirits, illness and, el and the elements, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May whatever sufferings arise due to life-threatening diseases, which, like a butcher leading an animal to the slaughter, separate the body from the mind in a mere instant, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May all embodied beings remain unharmed by acute, chronic, and infectious diseases, the mere names of which can inspire the same terror as would be felt in the jaws of Yama, Lord of Death. May the 80,000 classes of harmful obstructors, the 360 evil spirits that harm without warning, the 404 types of disease and so forth, never cause harm to any embodied being. May whatever sufferings arise due to disturbances in the four elements depriving the body and mind of every pleasure be totally pacified and may the body and mind have radiance and power and be endowed with long life, good health and well-being. By the compassion of the gurus and the three jewels the power of the Dakinis, Dharma protectors and guardians, and by the strength of the infallibility of karma and its results, may these many dedications and prayers be fulfilled as soon as they are made. Okay, thanks, Susan. Um, and I guess that's it. Oh, Lama Lo is teaching. Oh, tomorrow night. and Lama La is teaching tomorrow night in his study group session. And, uh, the vaccine is coming full force, so I think we're all gonna gonna be okay at the end. It looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did Did everybody hear that? Uh, Patty just said that the vaccine is is coming, and then we'll all be able to go come back to the temple to be together. <laughs> Does anyone else have any announcements? Any forgotten, perhaps? Uh, just the one other thing. Uh, please don't forget uh, the practice of dana and generosity. Um, as we are far away, sometimes we forget that there's a lot of maintenance that still has to happen with the temple. We are still trying to fundraise for the the technology stuff, um, and that would be great to get that all um, fully funded. 
um, and even just, you know, the maintenance, the water bill, the mortgage, the, you know, the lawnmower, all that stuff. Um, that stuff still goes on and is still needed and still necessary to keep this going so that when we do come back, it's all here and it's not, uh, you know, a wreck. So <laughs> we appreciate all your generosity all the time and your support. Um, and we really hope to have everyone back soon. Thanks for coming today. And thank you so much, Heather. That was a wonderful You're talk. welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Heather. Heather. Yay. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Heather. Bye-bye. You're welcome. <laughs>